Hello, my name is Finn Erquist and I'm working at the Acoustic Technology Group at the Department of Electrical Engineering. In the next few minutes I'd like to give you an introduction to the topic of electroacoustics and transducers. So, electroacoustics is about recording, transmission and reinforcement of sound. And here's a couple of examples, recording of a voice, and that recording could be played back either in your living room, over a mobile device, wherever you want to go, or perhaps at a big outdoor concert. But we also have other kinds of electroacoustics uh, systems. So the mobile phone shown here is also an electroacoustic device with a microphone and a loudspeaker. And this small hearing aid is also a complete uh, electroacoustic device with microphone and uh, a loudspeaker in miniature size. Transducers are the devices that translate between different domains, in this case, acoustic domain to electrical domain. And they can be based on different principles. And there are two main principles used. Uh, one is the electromagnetic, which basically uses the interaction uh, current in a wire that moves in a magnetic field is creating. And the other one is the electrostatic, which is basically having a charged capacitor and then allowing one of the, of the uh, capacitor plates to vibrate. And this can be used both for creating microphones and um, loudspeakers. If we look a bit closer on the microphone, then the most important characteristic of a microphone is how well it balances the different frequencies. And we can characterize that by a frequency response. An example is shown here for this microphone. And you can see that the, the, the curve here is not flat. It has a higher level at the high frequencies, which means that this microphone tends to amplify the high frequencies a bit more, creating a brighter and perhaps even a bit harsher sound. This microphone is often used for music recording and therefore this coloration is not necessarily a bad thing. You might actually want that in this uh, case. In other cases, when you want to measure noise from a highway or in industry complex, then you definitely want a microphone that does not color the sound. And here's an example from a well-known Danish manufacturer and we can see that the frequency response is very flat. So this microphone is very neutral and that's what you want uh, from a measurement microphone. Another aspect of a microphone that's important is the directivity. So how sensitive is the microphone to sound coming from different directions? And this particular microphone is intended for being equally sensitive in all directions. And this is shown again from the measurement chart here, which shows you almost perfect circles, except for the very high frequencies. So this microphone is uh, very close to being omnidirectional. Loudspeakers come in different shapes and sizes, and that's because it's actually very challenging to make a single speaker that covers the whole frequency range. Humans can hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and that's a huge span of frequencies. So most of the time we have to rely on using a set of speakers to cover the whole frequency range. And here's a set of measurement on a loudspeaker made out of two drivers, and you can see each of the drivers don't cover the entire range, but together they have uh, covered uh, almost the entire frequency range. Um, so that's why we have often have more speakers in the system. If you compare the response shown here, which is measured in the anechoic chamber, and then the microphone res response we saw before, then you will notice that we have much larger deviations here. And there are several reasons for that, but the most important one is the fact that ideally we want the diaphragm of the, of the loudspeaker to move back and forth like a piston and it does so at the low frequencies, but at higher frequencies, additional vibrations happen in the, in the diaphragm. And this is shown here in a, in a plot from a simulation. And you can see that there is a kind of a bending wave motion going on in the diaphragm itself. And these additional vibrations actually influence the frequency response and are part of creating the characteristic sound of the particular driver. That's a very quick introduction to electroacoustics. I hope you enjoyed it, and you're most welcome to contact me for more discussions, either via email or show up at the office. Thank you.